What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Riddell and in today's video we cover the Black Mar Demer Gambit which is a fun option for you guys who simply want to offer up a pawn and in return gain rapid development. Now this isn't a super dangerous opening if you're going up against someone at the Grandmaster level as if Black plays perfectly they're going to reach a slightly better middle game but even then we get very playable positions and really fun games where we can play attacking chess and fight for the win. Now this opening can actually be reached by e4 and d4 players. What on earth am I talking about? Well usually we reach the black mar by playing d4 against the move d5 by responding with e4, offering up our central pawn, later offering a second pawn, trying to break this game open and gaining an attacking edge. Now yet again, this can be reached by the e4 player as well against the Scandinavian defense with d5 by playing this very strange looking move d4 which transposes into the Blackmore Gambit. Notice here that Black has to take the pawn on e4, which is exactly what they want, or transpose into a totally different opening like the French defense, Nimzowicz defense, or even the Karl Kahn defense. Now, obviously, guys, this isn't a crushing position for white. We've seen this at the Grandmaster level thousands and thousands of times. But notice, against the move e4, our opponent didn't want to play the Karl Kahn. That's why we saw the move d5. But by playing this off-key move, you've brought them out of preparation, and there's a very good chance that you're going to be more comfortable going forward in this game. All that to say, guys, this is not just for you D4 players. This is an option for you E4 players as well against the Scandi. And here in this position, Black does have a big decision to make. Do they want to accept the Gambit or do they want to transpose into a totally different opening? If you do see your opponent transpose into a totally different opening, we do have a ton of other videos on this channel that cover what to do against lines and variations like these. But today we're going to be covering what happens if Black accepts the pawn, which most of the time is what happens. Against this, we're going to play the move knight c3. And yet again, if Black wants to play a quiet move like e6 or c6, that does give us the option of playing knight takes e4. But even against these, we still have that option of playing the move f3, offering up that second pawn. And now if Black plays a move like e6, we're going to take towards the center, very nice central squares for the pawns, and we're just playing chess. I don't really think the white has anything to worry about there. However, here in this position, we're going to be covering the top three moves from Black. The first one being taking on f3. This is going to be the move that you're going to see the majority of the time. And from time to time, you may also see moves like bishop f5 defending the pawn as well as e3, simply giving that pawn back and trying to keep this game as calm and quiet as possible. Let's first cover the most popular option of taking that pawn on f3. Against this, we're going to play knight takes f3. And now the best option from black is g6 trying to fianchetto this bishop. But you may see this move bishop g4 quite a bit. Here, this does look like a strong move, threatening to take on f3 and then win this pawn on d4. But guys, this is exactly what we want. We're actually going to ask Black to do this because if Black takes on f3, we have queen takes f3, and yeah, you can win our pawn on d4, but we're going to get that pawn on b7 and say thank you for that rook on a8. And if Black stops this with a move like c6, we can just naturally develop our pieces, bishop e3, bishop d3 against a move like knight d7, continue by castling kingside. This is the type of position that you may see quite a bit by playing the black mar gambit. We're not trying to checkmate the opponent's king in six, seven, eight, nine moves. We're simply trying to offer up a pawn and in return gain an advantage in development. We have a move like rook ae1 on the way, a very active rook there. We already have a battery ram on the f file, which by the way is not even allowing this minor piece to move. A very active bishop here aimed towards the king side of the board. Moves like knight e4 on the way, and we're just playing chess. So y'all, if you see this move bishop g4, just play h3. We actually want black to take this knight. And against a move like bishop h5, we're going to continue to play aggressively with g4 kicking this bishop back to g6 and then centralizing our knight with knight e5. Talk about a very active minor piece right in the center of the board. Very active and making things difficult for black. If black plays a quiet move like e6, trying to give themselves some breathing room in this position, it never hurts to just throw that bishop g2 move in there, developing our minor piece and also threatening the capture on b7 and if black sees this and continues with a move like c6 we now have the idea of h4 this is very common actually for white against that bishop g4 bishop h5 and bishop g6 maneuver and guys white is on the brink of winning this game for example if a move like h5 we're simply able to play g5 and then capture the bishop on g6 and if a move like h6 attempting to give this bishop some breathing room we're simply going to take the bishop off right away and notice here we are down a pawn but these pawns are huge targets why not go after them right away with the move queen d3 threatening to capture 
on g6 and it's actually in black's best interest just to give that pawn right back because if black plays a move like king f7 trying to hang on here now this king is very vulnerable to attack we can play rook f1 threatening g5 attacking that pin minor piece and if a move like king g8 stopping this we could take the pawn on g6 but i kind of like keeping the tension here simply playing g5 attacking this knight the very next move capturing back with the bishop we have a ton of ideas here we're currently attacking this minor piece with our bishop and our rook we have ideas like castling queenside and rook e1 on the way very active file for that rook attacking that pawn on e6 we're currently attacking the pawn on g6 anyways we have bishop h3 ideas attacking e6 bishop e4 ideas continuing to put more pressure on that pawn and we're just playing chess this position is simply crushing for white so y'all against this move h4 black trying to give this bishop some breathing room with h6 or h5 simply loses there's only one move here that doesn't give white a pretty nice edge and that is bishop b4 and the whole idea behind this is that against h5 black can now play the move bishop e4 and we can take that bishop off the board but notice we cannot take this knight because our knight on c3 is currently pinned to the king on e1 and now we can continue with a move like queen d3 attacking this knight defending the knight on c3 and i still think that white has a pretty fun game ahead of them so in summary guys against this move bishop b4 h5 runs into bishop e4 but even then you can take that bishop continue with queen d3 and i still think that white has a fighting chance there but here white has another option which is very interesting and that's actually my personal favorite choice with bishop g5 reinstating the threat of h5 because bishop e4 is no longer an option because we simply take off that minor piece and the knight on f6 cannot move as is pinned to the queen on d8 so usually here you're going to see a move like queen a5 black getting the queen the heck out of the way of the pin and also putting some pressure on our knight on c3 here i personally from a practical standpoint kind of like the move castling kingside and notice here guys we have very aggressive and very active pieces we don't really need to be too worried about black just winning more material by taking on c3 because now we can continue with rook f3 attacking the queen notice the amount of pressure that we're putting on the king side of the board as well and here if black plays the second best option of queen b4 we're going to have an over plus two advantage from the white side and if black plays the best move of taking on c2 we're simply going to take off that queen and for a second it's like wait why aren't we just down three pawns i mean we have four pawns and black currently has seven but we're going to get one of them back right now and after g takes f6 win that pawn and here if a move like rook f8 defending the pawn on f7 notice bishop g6 doesn't work because of h5 we can now continue with a move like rook c1 attacking the bishop rook f1 gaining more pressure on that pawn on f7 you plug this into a computer program it's going to give you almost a plus one advantage for white so we're still playing chess and we're still fighting for the win very uncomfortable and a hard position to play with as the black pieces so y'all that covers the move bishop g4 in which case we're simply going to respond with h three we're not worried about bishop takes knight because if queen takes bishop eyeing the pawn on b7 and if the move bishop h5 is played play g4 immediately later on play the move h4 and h5 and we're playing very aggressive and attacking chess white can win that game very quickly what about the best move here for black with g6 most master grandmaster level players prefer the move bishop c4 and notice here bishop g4 is no longer an option for black if you're ever playing an e4 d4 type opening like this and you see this bishop on c4 eyeing the pawn on f7 and the opponent's bishop comes to the square of g4 always be eyeing knight e5 ideas here we could play knight e5 immediately or even just take on f7 with check and then play knight e5 attacking the king very next move snatching off that bishop we have a very vulnerable king on g7 even material and we're going to continue to have fun in this game so y'all following this move bishop c4 and just in general if you have a bishop on c4 and a knight on f3 always be eyeing that bishop g4 move and always keep knight e5 ideas in the back of your head what happens if black just continues here with bishop g7 now we can simply castle kingside and against castling kingside the computer recommendation is bishop g5 queen d2 and bringing this rook to d1 i actually do like that setup from white but a lot of professional players actually like this idea of queen e1 and bringing this queen to the king side almost in a grand prix attack type fashion eyeing these dark squares of g5 h6 and the knight on f6 while continuing to defend this pawn on d4 we have future moves like bishop g5 and rook d1 and we have a very nice comfortable and active game here and if black continues with the move like bishop g4 we now continue with knight e2 i really like this idea by playing this move black is threatening to capture our knight on f3 and then simply win the pawn on d4 so by playing this move knight e2 we are defending the pawn 
on d4, for example, if bishop takes and rook takes on f3, black can no longer take this pawn because we now have two defenders. We can continue to play moves like c3, solidifying the positioning of our center. We have moves like bishop f4, bishop g5 in the air. We have a very active rook on f3. We're going to get this rook involved as well, and we have a very fun and aggressive attacking game. Y'all, going back to this position, following e takes f3 and knight takes f3, I just want to mention, if black continues with moves like g6 and bishop g7, most players do prefer playing bishop c4 and castling kingside, but there's another option here, and that is castling queenside if you prefer that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Playing a move like bishop to g5 or even bishop to f4 right now, continuing with queen d2, castling queenside, and white still has a big edge in development and a very active game. So guys, that covers e takes f3, in which case we're simply going to take back with the knight, continue to naturally develop our pieces, either castling kingside or queenside, and we have a very comfortable game. Now what happens if black defends the pawn on e4 with a move like bishop f5? Against this, I personally like the rare but strong option of g4 attacking this bishop. And notice here if a move like bishop e6, bishop c8, or even bishop d7, we're going to continue with g5 attacking this knight, which defends that centralized pawn. And the very next move, take that pawn off the board. We now have a very strong center. We're attacking that knight on h5. And if a move like g6, play bishop e2, we're now eyeing to take the knight on h5. And this is just a very uncomfortable and awkward position for black to play with. And even here, if black goes with bishop g6 instead of bishop d7, we're still going to continue with that g5 idea against this black's best move, and it's not even close, is playing knight d5, because now if we take back with the pawn, black has that idea of taking on c3 and then capturing back on e4. So here I recommend just taking back with the knight, and now guys, we're just playing chess. Let's say black plays a move like e6. We can now continue with moves like c3, solidifying the positioning of our center. Even play a move like h4, expanding on the king side, eyeing h5, attacking this bishop, or even c4 right now, attacking this knight. And white has a very fun game ahead. So y'all, going back to our key f3 position, if you see this move, bishop f5, continue with the shocking g4 followed by g5, and you're going to have a very fun and aggressive attacking game with a huge space advantage. What happens here if black goes with the move e3? You may see this move a little bit as well. Here black is simply giving back the pawn and going, look, I don't want any piece of the black mardimer gambit. Just take the pawn back and let's get a calm position. But now we just take back with the bishop. And notice here, guys, we have a pawn on d4, pawn on f3, and two minor pieces already developed. And this knight on f6 is the only piece that has moved. There's really not much to worry about here. I mean, if a move like e6, we can now continue with bishop d3. And against a move like knight bd7, we could just continue with moves like knight e2, queen d2, and then castling either direction, or even play the move f4. This has been played twice at the professional level. And this is a great way to really create an imbalance in this position here if a move like knight b6 we have knight f3 and there was a game that continued with black playing knight bd5 i actually do think that this is black's best option here attacking the bishop on e3 and the pawn on f4 but we're completely okay here we'll just take the knight on d5 drop our bishop back to d2 and the very next move play c4 followed by bishop c3 we have castling kingside and queen e2 on the way very nice game for white and yet again very active pieces with a slight advantage in development if you'd like to see our entire chess openings playlist, click that video to the left. If you'd like to see our top 10 responses for black against the move d4, click that video to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.